PC gaming can get really expensive, but if you're looking to get usable living room results then it's possible with a mid-range budget of around £750. That said, it's not a particularly good time to be building a PC, what with the imminent release of new graphics cards by both Nvidia and AMD, and disturbances to supply chain caused by Covid-19. But if you absolutely have to buy a PC right now, then this setup should run you at about £750, and will tackle pretty much all games on highest settings giving you at least 1080p at 60 frames per second. When building a PC on a budget, it's always a good idea to pick out things like your power supply, case and storage first. This might seem counterproductive, but they're things that you'll definitely need and by focusing on them first you'll know exactly how much money you have left for the more performance related parts of your build. The power supply for this build is a Corsair VS650. It's not the prettiest or most feature rich, but it comes from a reputable brand and has enough connectivity for this build and some future expansion. The temptation might be to go with an off-brand PSU, but this is arguably the most important part of your build, so it's important to give it the attention it deserves. A word on capacity, it's always a good idea to buy a unit with a higher output than you need. Not only does this give you the capacity to grow and upgrade your system, but it also ensures it'll operate in the efficiency sweet spot of 25-75% load. Next up is the case, and I've gone with the Corsair Carbide Series Spec 01. This is a decidedly budget case, but it has some really attractive features like expansion bays for hard disks and optical drives, and great airflow options with space for up to five 120mm fans. In terms of storage, I've gone with this 256GB NVMe drive from Sabrent. These are great value units and 256GB will be enough to store Windows and a couple of AAA games where loading times are important. You could shave a few pounds off here by going with a 2.5 inch SSD instead, but the NVMe is slightly faster and the price difference for lower capacity drives is a lot narrower. To store the rest of my games and files, I've paired the SSD with this 1TB Seagate Barracuda hard disk. By comparison to SSDs, a traditional hard disk is still a really cheap option for storing games without too much of a hit on performance, so it's a good pairing at this price point and releases as much budget as possible for our performance related components. Which brings us to the most important component on a gaming PC build, the GPU. For 60 frames per second at 1080p, it's a toss-up between the AMD 5600 XT and the NVIDIA GeForce 1660. The former has slightly better performance in most games, but also would eat up more of our available budget, so I've settled on the GeForce 1660. This unit from Gigabyte has great cooling and a slight overclock allowing for better performance than some other models. So now we're left with around £330 to spend on the CPU, motherboard and RAM, which puts us firmly in AMD territory and I chose the Ryzen 5 3600 non-X version for this build. I would have liked to have gone for the X version for the slight boost in single core performance, but unfortunately it was out of stock. Still, this CPU should give us great gaming performance and won't hold back the GPU either. I've paired the 3600 with this Gigabyte B450 based motherboard. I would have preferred to go for a full ATX board, but the only ones available were quite a bit more expensive and would have limited my budget for the rest of my components. I could have also gone with an older chipset, but this B450 unit will allow forward compatibility with AMD's upcoming Zen 3 processors, which seemed like a sensible decision to make for future upgradability. It's certainly an acquired taste, but it'll match the rest of the overall look of the build and it has some great features including USB 3 and even an RGB header if you're into that sort of thing. With all that done, we've got more or less £100 left to spend on RAM, which gives us enough to swing for 16GB rather than 8 I went with this kit from Corsair, the Vengeance line has a great look and in my experience has been rock solid. These chips are nothing special, they're rated to 3200MHz, which is the maximum speed this CPU will support natively, which should help things run a bit smoothly, particularly given how Ryzen processors love fast RAM. 
And that's all of our components. Nothing left to do but put them all together and see how it works. Time for a montage. So, how did it turn out? Well, I've actually been pretty impressed with this build. It definitely looks the part from afar, with it only becoming apparent how cheap the case is when you get close up. The case itself is definitely not the easiest to work with by a long way. There's very little cable management which leads to having to route things in a less than ideal manner, and the whole thing just looks very messy. If I were doing this build again, I would definitely seek out the non-windowed version so the chaos inside is at least hidden from view. That said, it does manage to fit all the components inside with plenty of space for additional storage and more cooling fans down the line. Speaking of fans, the provided unit is certainly an acquired taste and I would recommend you swap it out if you can. I've actually installed a couple of cryo rig fans I had laying around which have the advantage of being 4-pin PWM fans, meaning they run much slower and only spin up when things start to get a bit toasty inside the case. In terms of gaming performance, the goal here was to hit 60 frames per second at 1080p on most games, so let's see how we did. As you can see, we managed to tick all the boxes on high or ultra settings on all the games that I tested. So if you're looking to get decent results at 1080p, I've more or less proved that a build in this price range will suit you for now and for the next few years. In fact, for less demanding and older titles, I was able to get completely playable results at 4K without making any compromises on settings. Awesome. 
So there we have it guys, a PC build capable of 1080p 60 frames per second on all current AAA titles for under £750. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video, I've certainly enjoyed building this PC and will be using this as my living room rig from now on. And that's it for another video. If you've liked this content please consider subscribing via the button on screen and please check out my other videos for more of this type of content. If you're interested in buying any of the hardware shown in this video then you can find links in the video description for all the products in this build. And with that I wish you a good day and I'll see you again soon.